uh, correction for the next meeting. I put the eighth in the original, and it's really the ninth. So, other than that, any any uh, questions about the agenda? All in favor of accepting? Aye. 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 Uh, approval of the minutes of the last meeting. Everybody had a chance to read uh, Ed's very thorough minutes. Any questions? Motion to approve. Second. 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 I guess I wasn't there. All right. All in favor? Aye. All right. Uh, I don't know whether we have any public input tonight. Uh, Kevin, trust you. You're just visiting. Just visiting. Right. Okay. Uh, I only had a couple of comments to make. Um, first of all, uh, it's my uh, sad duty to report that this will be Dr. Austin's last meeting. And we, we've been trying very hard to make him stick around, but he, he refuses to do so. So we're going to have to let him go. Nine years. <laughs> Longer than eight. Well, well, it's, a four it's year ten. <laughs> Thank you for your service. <laughs> Thank you <very> <laughs> Jerry, I'd like to you CBI. I appreciate you being here tonight as well. Go <laughs> on. Uh, Commissioner Jones could not be here tonight. I spoke with him earlier, and he uh, updated me on two items, which I'll uh, let you know about now. First is that uh, we are still in uh, the process of identifying new board member candidates. Uh, technically, we're still a seven-member board. The legislation so far as we know, has been submitted to the, to the uh, state legislature. We're waiting for a report from Representative Jaspers on uh, the status of that. Uh, and, and Rob will continue to follow up on that as well. And I reminded him Sunday as well. Mr. Jaspers? Yes. You saw him? I had someone who was going to a reception with him and they were going to bother him about something for us and also for Good Samaritan that they have dropped the ball on. So, just like last year. Yeah. So, <clears throat> I put in a word. We may be in search of uh, more board members than we realize. If, uh, if that doesn't happen, we'll, we'll hope so. It's got to happen. Uh, overall, the uh, activity at the airport is uh, is up. We gathered today to watch the refueling of a couple of Ospreys, which, what happened, Randy, they just... Uh, the weather front moved, they had to re, uh, change their uh, flight path. That would have probably been, what, a thousand gallons of... Uh, each. Gas wow. each. They wanted 6,000 pounds plus. Wow. <laughs> but we did get a UH-60, so, thanks. Consolation Prize. <laughs> will, they, uh, will they come back? Oh, yes, sir. Okay. Good. They have been here before. Uh, when we had those four in here, wasn't it four? Yes, four? sir. They were very, that we took good care of that. Yes. So. Well, it, as we're going to talk a little bit, uh, Randy's going to talk a little bit about the sales of fuel last year, but around 30% of our sales in fuel last year were military related. So the importance of keeping our training up and being available, uh, these guys apparently like to use us. And uh, it's, uh, it's great business for us. It's high volume business for sure. And I got financials for the, uh, the end of the year, which are, are going to be uh, discussed a little later on, but we finished uh, strongly for the year. So all in all, uh, it was a good start. A good finish is going to give us a good start uh, for the new year. So. Uh, Let's uh, move on to number six, uh, airport co-manager recruiting process. Okay. I'll talk about that. We had 20-plus uh, uh, candidates apply. We've had uh, interviews with six or seven of those. Um, still a conversation or two yet to go, but we've, we've come to two or three candidates who are certainly qualified and uh, filled the requirements very well. Um, by the end of this week, we will have completed all that uh, discussion process and uh, have an offer out to somebody as the game plan. So by end of week, an offer for uh, the co-manager, uh, and it is, we are looking at, at this as a co-manager position, working with Randy 
uh, on the, the overall operation of the airport. Questions? I would like to add, make sure if we get an opportunity to take finalists to the airport, see if they can physically do a, th a few tasks that are demanding and if they're not physically able to do them, it would probably disqualify them from the position. Agreed. Like, you know, climbing they can't pull up a, yeah, climbing the tanks and pulling three inch holes charged all the way 50 feet and putting it back. And they can't pull a hose because of a bad back or sciatica like I got here. Uh, and unfortunately, there's really no accommodations that can be made for that. Exactly. This is um, usually a one position deep I'm, during I'm the day, so I'm anything can come up. I have a jet come in tomorrow citation, so you just never know. We had the, the U-860 today, we just happened to have extra people because we were planning for the Osprey. Right. But 9% of the time, you'd have to handle that by itself. I agree. And I will say that uh, we need to talk about that uh, tank. That's yes. a, a safety issue, so we need to talk oh, about yeah. that. And work with Jack on it. We've got a good plan. And I'd add that uh, one of the criteria that we're explaining to the candidates as we just have the chance to talk about it is that they are the face of the airport. They are the they are the public. They're, they're what the public sees. And when uh, new folks come into the airport, prospects who are considering moving a plane in here or looking at the at the uh, horseshoe for possible lease. Uh, we want this person to get the ball rolling, but know when to say, all right, you need to call the airport authority and get down to cases on lease, design, rules and regulations, and so forth. So that ability is, is uh, one of the things that we're also looking for. Very good. Anything else? All right, thank you. All right, if you grab the financial statement that I passed out, the one page, uh, quickly review the two columns to look at, to really pay attention to are the first two, year-to-date actual and year-to-date plan. This is through December, so it's 12 months. Uh, from uh, a revenue standpoint, we actually, our revenue was actually lower by about $40,000 for the year than we anticipated. The bulk of that comes from uh, the fact that we charged lower prices than we we planned for, uh, which resulted in a reduced revenue. However, if you go down to the middle of the page, gross margin, you can see that we're basically on target, 145.8 versus 144.2. The reason for that is that the markup, whatever our price is, is still basically the same. Uh, so we're making the same margin on fuel no matter what the price is. And in general, Correct me if I'm wrong, Randy, but in general, those prices are very competitive with uh, some of the, air, the airports around us. Yes, so, sir, they are. Correct? Yes, sir, they are. Uh, from an expense standpoint, our expenses were about $10,000 less. Uh, we, uh, we overburdened uh, payroll a little bit more than anticipated total payroll expense. Uh, we. Uh, we ended up with, uh, as a result, a profit of about $24,000, which is about double what we anticipated. So it was a it was a good year. It was a good year. The uh, item at the bottom, capital outlay, hangar construction, uh, Faye Harvey has been including that as an expense in our financials. It's the uh, it has to do with the movement of one of the one of the hangars. Uh, Randy, you remember which one that is? The the port of port is next to Garrett Cobb's uh, maintenance facility. That was a, a gift, but then we had the outlay for site prep, gravel, and concrete to get it constructed. And the deal was uh, Lloyd Thompson gave us the building, but we had to prepare the site and install it. And after a set period of time, we'll start receiving income from that port of port. Okay. Uh, it's not an expense of the business, it's an asset, it's actually an addition to an asset, and I've discussed this with Faye, she's going to move it out, so I've included it down there as a notation, because it is in her financials as an expense, but it's, it's uh, truly not. So, that's about it. Um, we, we ended up a little less than a, a margin of, as profit net income than we did last year, just a few thousand dollars, but uh, statistically, I think we're uh, we're right there. 
Anybody have any questions? No. Okay. Well, get her on then. We'll move on to Randy Airport. It's a perfect segue. Uh, thank you, sir. If you look at the 2015 fuel sales for Pickens County Airport, you see it broken down by month, military, air methods, civilian jets, and total jet aid. Uh, the reason I've already anticipated the 2016 estimate and the percentage that I see them increasing are as follows. 100 low lead with, with through customer service and more airframes on the field at this time. I think it's very realistic to project a 10% increase in uh, 100 low lead. Military has already agreed to start flying more because of our ability to do hot pit refueling day or night, 24-7, with uh, fire guards and this, all the standard safety practices. So we do are anticipating an increase in traffic. For air methods, they have just notified us they are going to install a 2,000 gallon fuel tank, but they will still use us as a supplier and they anticipate flying more in this region and possibly fueling other helicopters out of the air methods location. As such, we should anticipate filling them once a month. Uh, I doubt if they use 2,000 gallons, but if they do, we'll be more than happy to fill them up twice. Uh, the civilian jets, uh, this is a little lower. Last year I anticipated an increase only because more of the affluent jet owners have bought per, uh, property north of this area and we, we have one example flying in tomorrow, John Janus uh, owns the uh, barge company in, uh, Miss, on the Mississippi River. He's flying in more. Uh, Mickey Dunn just flew in this last weekend. He was anticipating uh, flying in more this year. So I think it's very realistic to project an increase in fuel sales. Uh, in addition to that, we were scouted by a movie set location uh, scout for a Marvel movie to be shot at the Pickens County Airport if they agree to the facility. They're going to construct a house, fly in a C-130, and stay for a bit to film a new Marvel action movie. Uh, the scout seemed to think we had the best location possible with the scenery around it, the, especially the mountain on the West Taxiway with no structures to give you any idea what time frame you're shooting from. So he said he'd get back with us as soon as possible. He's, he's working through the Pickens County uh, uh, what's that word? Chamber of Commerce. Yes, sir. And working with uh, Rob Jones about trying to get back to this as soon as possible. We spent about two hours with him, but he wouldn't divulge the stars that will be there. But uh, they're going to actually build a house for the set. And I made a comment today, too bad it wouldn't build us an FBO. So, uh, you know, hey, you never know. Why couldn't they build it and make it look like a terminal? Exactly. So, so we can buy it really cheap. Yes. Well, we wouldn't charge them the uh, quarter of a million dollars for the airport. Right? <laughs> no, sir. I like the way you think. <laughs> well, we seem to be getting a better handle on things, and I really do see a, a, a nice increase for 2016. It's been a profitable year for us. We've got a lot of changes on the horizon, but uh, I see them all positive. Very good. Any questions? Okay, Randy, and one question on the field. Yes, sir. Do, you, uh, do you have an opinion, or possibly Jack, on uh, aviation fuel prices for the next quarter, two quarters? Mm. You see it fairly stable. Mm. What are what are you hearing from suppliers? Fuel prices went down in the last seven days, seven cents. I anticipate them probably dropping. My best guess is they'll drop below two fifty a gallon. Our purchase price. Today's buy price is 270, but I do see if this trend uh, for barrel oil keeps decreasing, we may see two dollar to two and a quarter hour buy price for fuel. So possibly the airport could run around at uh, 219, 229 per gallon, still make a dollar a gallon. Did I hear today that the price of oil went down by under dollar. thirty under thirty bucks? I think so. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. I think so. And then Jet A's been falling like a rock. We were. You know, we our last fuel purchase was like a dollar eighty six. It's already down to one fifty six eighty six, and I anticipate that going probably to a dollar and a quarter. Our fuel price for Jet A is a constant four nineteen with the truck, and everyone is happy with that. 
We update our prices all the time, but we still have a nice profit margin on Jet A versus 100 low lead. If you see the projections from last year, uh, we're kind of running 32,000 100 low lead, 30,000 Jet A. So if Jet A goes up to about 35,000, there's no reason we shouldn't make about $2 a gallon, possibly two and a half. Uh, and the customers are happy. We've increased landing fees, so any jet that does not buy fuel will pay $100 per landing fee. And you probably found a couple of transactions in the last three months for landing fee on our sheets to turn it over. Uh, so we're going to put that in a new uh, net gain column as well. So I anticipate the more more one, more uh, fixed wing are coming to the airport because <coughs> around Atlanta they're pushing them out. So they want the hangars as bad as possible, and they love tie downs as well. So more space, more income. I don't know where those are going. If, if we are earning landing fees, they're going somewhere. We have a category in the financials. 2015 probably was less than a thousand dollars, but I anticipate 2016 possibly being more. So okay, well, I have to find she might land, She might have it left under uh, tie down. So we'll have to see if there's a breakout. Okay, well I'll ask that question. And I have one additional question on uh, air methods. 20% uh, increase there. You say they're going to use us as, as a, a supplier. We are going to be their the only sole supplier. supplier. So they're not going to look to go buy this directly. Oh no, from, sir. They're so extremely they, happy with us. They guaranteed us they're going to put the 2,000 gallon tank in and fly possibly fuel. It's cheaper for the northern air methods to land at Jasper than to fly all the way to Atlanta for bulk fuel. Uh -huh. So they're going to start using that bulk fuel more in their location. And I anticipate us pumping a lot of jet for them. Okay. And they pay for the truck every month, so kudos to them. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, any other comments? Okay, uh, Jack, I'd like to hear from you as well. We have talked about, wanted to speak about the aviation fuel tax issue. Uh, we had, uh, in our CIP, we're, we're counting on the use of the aviation fuel tax uh, money that was supposed to come out after the first year. Uh, we've got uh, some news from GDOT. It's, it's, it's not 100%. It's just talk at this point. But they are not anticipating as much as they originally thought. Uh, they anticipated uh, receiving around $20 million worth of tax. Uh, talking to someone just a while ago, they said that would be reduced substantially, $2 million range. Uh, so it's not going to go as far as we first anticipated. Uh, so we just need to regroup and determine what we want to do on the projects that we were anticipating. At. They, they are looking at the next couple of weeks by the end of the month before they really realize how much money there's going to be and when it will be uh, issued to the state. Uh, Carol Comer with, with uh, GDOT and intermodal programs and Steve Bryan are going to the legislature to see why the state tax, aviation state tax money is going elsewhere other than back into the aviation community. And that's what it was all about. Was they went through this great exercise, the FAA did, a great exercise from where all this tax was over the X number of years. We've been fighting that battle for years. Yes, sir. And, and now that they, they're saying that, you know, up until the end of the beginning of the year, that, yes, this is coming around now, I guess the state, or I guess the legislators are going, well, here's a pile so of money. They're saying 10% of what they got. Well, in. That's just the, the thoughts at this point. But that's what they're saying, 10% mm -hmm. of what they got in revenue from aviation fuel taxes. Are going back to airports, mm -hmm. and you know what that number is in Florida? Ninety percent. It's overnight. Is it? Yeah, and they don't put their tax money in the general fund. They put it towards airports. And any of us who flung to Florida, and I'm fixing to fly Monday to mm -hmm. Florida. Every airport I've ever been in there has all kinds of things. They're right. very nice. It does. I agree with that. I fly down all because they that's that's where the horseshoe reimbursement money was coming from, right? No, no, sir. It's a different pot. Yeah. Different, different pot. Yes, sir. Okay. And that's that's this was that's this was tax. this was the state sheriffs of the projects that we're looking at, right? Well, there was this was for we were 
Uh, we were utilizing this for the, the apron projects. Is well, that's that was something we haven't planned for the for the next fiscal year. But the one that's the one that's significant is 167 thousand, which we were counting on for the hangar project. Right. And my question is, are are requests going to be proportionally reduced, or is it going to be first come first serve? I mean, it's going to be first come first serve. And I've, uh, we, I've talked to uh, Scott, told him we want to go ahead and get on that that list ASAP, and it's going to be a need to be ready to go forward immediately on it. Is it uh, does that? Heighten the importance of getting down in front of them, yes, meeting them face to face, talking to them. Yes, sir. And I'm ready to do that. And with anybody on the authority that's interested in doing that, we had uh, Mr. Mr. Howell and I had talked about meeting with GDOT, with Carol Comer. I, I believe y'all have met Carol. Uh, she was head of the aviation programs, and now she's over the full the whole intermodal group. And Steve Bryant, who used to be the executive director down in runs with Georgia's airport. He's now number two in line, or number two in this, this group, so he's heading the aviation programs. And I wanted to get Mr. Powell and whomever else would like to go with us uh, to get in front of Carol and Steve and Scott Serrett, who is your aviation program representative. So, uh, yeah, I'd like to plan to do that next week. Okay. Myself. Uh, I don't know if anybody can get a way to join, join me, but depending on the day. I'll get we'll get some days for next week, and then Monday's I'll send those out. Um, Mondays and Fridays everybody. typically work work best for me. For Mondays and Fridays. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay. Um, it is uh, it is worthwhile noting, and we're going to get into this actually in the next section of the agenda. But it's worthwhile noting that our economics on the T hangers still work. If we have to add that 167,000 to the total uh, loan package, if we if we can even go back and ask for it, the the economics still work. Not quite as well, but they still work with a good cushion of uh, debt coverage there. Yeah. You know, we also talked about that closeout monies. Right. Yes. So that's the potential. Just depends on how how much money's in in that uh, towards the end of the year. And that can be a, a reimbursement to a project that's already gone forward. So that would be one that we would also want to talk to Carol and Steve and, and others about. So, so that theory would be that we we spend we, we come up with the money ourselves and then ask for a reimbursement down the road. That's that's correct. Now the the, the issue with that is, and we we've, we've talked about that if we go forward with the project and then we go under contract with. GDOT, FAA, since uh, Georgia is a block grant state, they cannot pay for, they cannot reimburse for, for work done through on the state, the 5%. So that would be what we would not be able to be reimbursed for is there for that 5%. Five, not 25, but 5. 5%, yes. And we were thinking that uh, our closeout money might take the place of the uh, second, the phase two for the... Uh, phase two for the land acquisition. Yeah, for the horseshoe. Thousand. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. And maybe even accelerating phase three on the horseshoe. That, that, is, that is correct. And I know that's a high priority for, for the commission is to make sure we go get as much uh, going forward on the land acquisition. Mm -hmm. It just all depends on what, what lump sum money's not being used by the end of the year. Now all this money has to be used by June thirtieth, was the end of the state fiscal year. Uh, so we just have to backtrack in order to be able to go to the state and say this is what we're wanting if, if it's available. And just make sure we give them enough time to make sure that we can get a contract through GDOT on that on this project, project to project. Very good. I have a question. Is that the same way in South Carolina it is in Georgia in terms of percentage? I'm just sir. curious if it's... South Carolina does not have the, the state funding that Georgia does. And they're primarily, I'd say, 75 plus percent of the projects are 
or a 7525. And that would be mainly uh, federal federal monies and on the, on the state side they, they do very very little on the state side. Well, I was just curious because I know they have a state commission of aviation because I have a friend who's on it. Mm -hmm. Yes sir. From Anderson. Mm -hmm. And from every region, there's they a do. person that's on the, I guess it's called the Airport Commission or State Commission or something. It's the Department of Aeronautics. Yeah, he's yeah. on that. And, and I just wondered if that had any clout to do anything. It sounds like it does. Yeah. Okay. I think there's seven or nine commissioners throughout the state of South Carolina. But Georgia, South Carolina is, is their, the head of their, uh, I guess the Department of Aeronautics. He said they're just hanging on by fingernails they can do so so they're very limited while you know we've talked about Florida having all this money that they, they do have which is significant uh, compared to all the most of the other southeast states Georgia's is, is much better than what South Carolina's current state well, it has to be for Florida because of the tourism yes. well I hope they come up with the answer to the where's all that tax money because Delta alone has to be tens of millions of dollars of, of uh, fuel tax. Yeah, but theirs is a carve out. That goes straight back to Hartsfield Airport, as I understand it. So that wouldn't be included in your 10%. That's over and above that 10% that, that total is correct. disbursement. Yeah. It's right. included in the 20 million. Correct. Right. Yeah. correct. Yeah. And that's, that's what, it, it, I mean, there's all the speculation. We could, we could pull out all we want, but Delta has been fighting all that. They didn't want it to go to, General Aviation, they wanted to go straight straight to the air carrier airport. So, uh, so yeah, they'll they'll take a lion's share of that. Mm -hmm. All right. Still, you add up all the how many hundreds of airports are there in the state? Hundred and five. Hundred six. Let's sell. Let's sell fuel. Well, there's 106 airports, but not all of them do sell uh, sell fuel. Is that 106 public use airports? Yeah. That doesn't include private fields like Elliott Field behind us or whatever. Uh, okay, uh, any update on the course you process? Uh, not, not at this point, but we're still going forward with getting that moved through. Scott's handling that himself. He is. Yes, sir. All right. I, okay. <coughs> Any other questions to Jack? One other item that uh, last week Randy and I went out, I don't know if this is something you want to talk about at this point, and I apologize, I didn't get my notes prepared till today. I can send those to you right now. I have, I, I found them, but I, I have them. But uh, Randy and I went out and walked around the airport just to, you know, just to see what kind of concerns he may have, and there was there was some, some items that, I mean, we can discuss those now, or I can send those out, and we can talk about them later, whatever you'd like to do. Why don't you let me, uh, why don't you let me summarize them out of your memo, and I'll, I'll, okay. I'll send it out. Okay. These are mostly maintenance related. There was some maintenance related issues, and then there was some, uh, some additional uh, land acquisition and a few, few other items that Randy was had, had kind of seen out, you know, being the eyes and ears out on the airport. It's just as I told Randy, I'd like for he and I to get together every couple of months yeah. just to just see what what's going on out there. And just wanted to report those to you. So okay, if that's all right. I'll send those. I'll summarize those and send them out. Okay. Okay, uh, Commissioner is not here tonight. I mentioned the two things that he told me of. Um, let's go on and talk briefly about the uh, T Hanger project, which was one of the primary reasons I wanted to get together tonight. Uh, we left with two questions at the end of the last meeting. Uh, the first question was Don's question can we use loan funds to, to satisfy the the uh, airport's 25% requirement on the uh, airport improvement funds. And Jack has confirmed that the answer is yes. We can. That, that is correct. Yes, sir. Uh, the second question was um, related to exactly how the airport authority was going to uh, manage the, the financial aspect of this, specifically the relationship with the bank. 
and I started with a meeting uh, with Commissioner Jones uh, a couple of weeks ago, or it was right after the New Year, to discuss the what the, the, the mechanics would be of this transaction, that is, the borrowing of the money and the disbursement of the funds and the repayment of the funds. Uh, I was suggesting, without remembering what he told me, I was suggesting that the county itself actually be the borrower of these funds. The airport authority doesn't own land, it doesn't have employees, it's really the operating entity for the airport only. So my initial suggestion was that the loans, the loan funds run through the county itself because Faye Harvey is going to be making the bank or the, the, the uh, loan payments for us. And he reminded me that the county can only borrow up to a 12-month cycle, has to, has to be out of any debt borrowed during the year at the end of that year. Uh, but he also uh, pointed out again, which I had been told before, was that the purpose of the Development Authority is specifically to facilitate projects and financial transactions like this. Uh, you, you're more familiar with this than I am, but I spent some time talking with Jerry and that was, that was essentially the track that you felt was best and that you wanted the bank to pursue. On, on that basis, the the development authority would borrow that would actually contract with the bank, borrow the money, pass it along to the to the county for disbursement to the contractors and uh, the the workers on the project, the purchase of the hangers, and then the revenue from the hangar project would would be funneled back to the county. The county would make the loan payments on the on the uh, transaction. That, at least as far as as far as our discussions are concerned, works. I did talk with Tom Lindsay of the Development Authority this morning. Uh, he said that uh, this was a this was a format that that uh, he recognized was likely, but he wasn't, of course, voting for it. He said he only has one vote that he would. He would be happy to entertain a proposal, and our plan, our, my thought was that we would take the information that we've we've um, so far developed concerning the project, and it has been it's been fairly detailed with the performance spec that you gave us. Uh, we combine that with a with a general uh, presentation on the project, and uh, let the development authority vote on that proposal. The amount of money that we're going to be asking for is on the order of $632,000, which assumes that we're going to be able to get some help from the state from these uh, funds. And if we've got a few minutes here, I think we do. I'll let me pass this out. This is this is a, a uh, summary of the first two years of the. The uh, capital improvement program is an extract, but basically shows what our plan is for 2016-2017. Uh, we've talked briefly about item number one, and item number two, uh, briefly, is 166,000. That's shown there is uh, a moving forward of our 2017 entitlement into 2016, and using that as partial payment for the uh, horseshoe, additional funds that would be uh, paid to the horseshoe. The last three items, three, four, and five, are the taxi, are the uh, the T hanger project, taxi lanes design, uh, construction of the taxi lanes themselves, and that's really the whole site prep, if I'm not mistaken. And then the construction of, of the hangers themselves, and the the state portion of number five is is. Uh, what we learned about just recently that the, the state had, uh, uh, in, in, uh, in theory, had expressed a willingness to uh, help us with that amount. So to, to go back to your comments earlier about the fund, what we really are going to ask for with the state is the combination of that 187500 
for the uh, site prep and the 167,000 for the what will amount to be the uh, the uh, pads. Is that right? The concrete. That's that's correct. Yes, so the total is going to be north of 300 and 350,000 approximately. I've added a separate column to this under, as you can see on the right, local cost UCBI loan. These are the funds that the 17.5 and the 62.5 are the county's share of these, the 25% of these uh, funds that we're responsible for. And I'm showing these as coming from the loan proceeds. The balance of 552 is the cost of actually putting the buildings up and completing the project. Total of 632,400. Uh, I sent this out. I'll uh, pass it out again for uh, discussion. Uh, this is the. These are the economics on the project itself, showing the uh, net loan request of 632,400. Uh, the application of the borrowed funds is those three items that are listed in the right-hand column of the CIP. 17.5, and 5.52 for a total of 6.32. And then uh, we ran two uh, scenarios at two different interest rates. One of these was uh, at Jerry's request, kind of a stress test to see what the cash flow would look, at, look like at 5%. And uh, with roughly 70,000 of net revenue coming from the project fully rented, uh, our debt service leaves us uh, our debt service of uh, uh, 42,000 in the 3% case and 50,000 in the 5% case leaves us with uh, 27,993 in the 3% case and 19,997. That's excess cash flow over and above the loan uh, debt service. So our coverage on this again in the scenario of 632 is in the 100. 67 percent range at 3 percent, uh, even 140 percent at the 5 percent range. So the the uh, the comfort level on uh, cash flow here is is fairly high. The next steps involve uh, discussion with the commissioners uh, just to let them know what our plans are. I've had I've personally spoken with. Uh, Becky Denny, who uh, is supportive of the project, and <coughs> I also managed to uh, have lunch with Jerry Barnes today, uh, and almost got Dave to join me, but uh, it was actually a fairly good meeting. He, he is uh, generally supportive of every effort we can make to get the horseshoe uh, managed, and I feel I, he didn't. He didn't uh, give me a ringing endorsement, but I feel that uh, he is supportive of the T hanger project that we're we're discussing here because it involves no, essentially no outlay by the county over and above the proceeds of the loan, which is supported by the project. So, in summary, I've addressed some of the questions that we had last time. Uh, Specifically, the question of loan loan proceeds being used to pay our 25 percent. Uh, discussed it with uh, Jerry and, and the bank in general, and I've also talked to Tom Lindsay, who is uh, who has uh, invited us to come and and uh, speak to the authority. Uh, and finally, I uh, uh, think we've covered our bases with the individual commissioners. Uh, I'm considering, although we missed on purpose, we didn't go to the work session last week because we didn't have the answers to these questions and hadn't completely run these out. Uh, I'm considering asking uh, uh, Rob for the purpose of the tea hanger project, which again involves no disbursement by the, by the county. Uh, I'm thinking about going to the commissioners at the regular commission meeting. The, the plan they proposed was come to the work session, have the presentation, talk about it, and then we'll just deal with it in the, just with a vote in the uh, commission meeting. Since I reviewed this in detail, these two pieces of paper specifically with each of the commissioners, uh, except for Jerry. Jerry, uh, I, I 
think, uh, wanted to keep it at a conceptual level, which we did. Uh, but I think we could conceivably go and, and at least get the, the commission's blessing on going ahead with the project as we're generally envisioning it here. So that's about all I have to say about it. Um, any questions? What I would like, before if you do have questions before you ask them, I would like tonight for the authority to uh, endorse this approach. Uh, basically, not give me necessarily a blank check, but give me the authorization to continue to pursue uh, the project along the lines that we're talking here. Uh, the most important part being the uh, minimal uh, minimization of county county outlays, county cash contributions. Uh, yeah, contributions. Let, let me ask Jerry. Uh, <coughs> development loans to the development authority. Mm -hmm. uh, is that also with a intergovernmental guarantee? Yes, yes. They have the intergovernmental agreement with the county. And, and uh, to uh, be able to tie in that uh, uh, tax anticipation if, if need be in any kind of default. So that's really the issue that we've got to get yes. approval from the commissioners. Yes. There's really nothing else the commissioners need to approve no. other than that. Other than that. Uh, did, did, did conversations just, you've had with them include that piece? The intergovernmental agreement? No, it did not. Uh, but I assumed, and tell me if I'm wrong, uh, what does tax, anticip do tax anticipation notes have something to do with this, or is it is it simply a backup guarantee by the county on the note? Well, you know, it flows through, in other words, of the, the industrial government authority when they, to, in order them to encumber any kind of, of, of debt and, and so on for enterprise uh, expansion of the county or whatever, then the way that the funds that they have available is through either something like this where it's self-sufficient the cash flow and or the uh, county's backing that if there's a default in there then, then the, the, the loan is, is paid back and so on. So that's that's the conduit, that's the flow that we'll have to, that we'll have to travel. It, it is the bank's way to get access to the county's taxing ability. Yes. But wouldn't the commissioners be aware of this if we're going through a development authority uh, loan? Would they not have already thought of this because they've done this multiple times? I mean, I'm, I'm assuming that their experience would guide them that there would be that intergovernmental uh, guarantee on this. Unless it's been talked about on those bases, not necessary. Okay. Yeah. I mean, my where I think you know you guys need to be at is now you, you you're going to be jointly asking for um, the commissioners, more commissioners, to approve this, and, and also you're you're going to be presenting to the industrial development authority. You know, this is our plan. You've done an excellent job laying it out. You've got it. Uh, I mean, you've got the, the numbers are there, they're real, they're, they're substantiated. Um, so, you know, it's just a matter of, of those two almost simultaneously need to be approached uh, in order to, to get that approval. And then once that's done, then, then the legal drafting of the documents begin and so on. And, you know, within 30, 45 days, as general rule, uh, with, the, with the Dutch authorities vote for approval and the Board of Commissioners, Total approval, then this could be funded. Okay. Well, in my in my discussions with uh, Commissioner Jones, I don't know, but I could assume that he is he is aware that there will be an, an intergovernmental agreement. I think he's fully aware of it. I, I thought that he <coughs> and uh, he's he's not brought it up. He hasn't expressed any uh, anxiety about it. Uh, so. I guess the question is, lay it out there in black and white and see what, see what yeah. happens. That's fair. Good guidance. 
Is, is that a, uh, is, are intergovernmental agreements like one page of letters? Are they? Uh, no, they're, thick, they're, uh, <laughs> they're, they're, they're book. They're book. Yeah. Reasonable book, but they are book. Our, our intergovernmental agreement between the airport and the county when we first started the airport authority wasn't a book. No, we were talking about documents here. Bankers are involved, Jim. Uh, bankers and lawyers. I was going to say, Drake. Well, we had lawyers. Yeah, there goes that part. We had lawyers. First the water was on the bank. It's lawyers. It's just like one word. It's like just one page. In all due respect, in all due respect, the world in which we operate is filled with all volumes of books. Somebody needs to take that. I meant to, before we get into the discussion, I meant to ask if you had anything to add to what I said. About our discussions. And, you know. Well, again, you know, I've, I've, uh, I want to commend you guys for a job well done. You went about this. Uh, in times past, uh, I've seen a lot of, um, we'll call it looseness in these type of, uh, of uh, transitions and so on, transactions. Uh, so, I want to commend you for that. You've been very thorough. Uh, you're being very thorough, and you continue to be very thorough. I think with the professionalism sits on this board. So as a taxpayer of Pickens County, I certainly do appreciate that. Uh, well, but, uh, well, let's just say this. David and Ed have put a ton of work into this. They have. Yeah. Uh, yes, yeah. they have. You, you, you know, again, uh, everybody's put forth their part. They've done a great job. And again, uh, as a taxpayer of Pickens County, I'll put that hat on for a moment. Thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, put the biker hat on. Mm -hmm. uh, again, you looked at it from the standpoint of all your cash flows. We, we give it a stress test. Uh, to see what um, uh, what could happen if rates go up and so on and all and, and where you would be at. The county, uh, you know, and basically unless some catastrophic something happens, uh, uh, even though that there will be on the hook, if you would, for debt service of this, uh, that should that should be a mute point. Uh, but, you know, of course, in any kind of business, administrative action, you know, things can happen. We hope that not be the case. But, um, um, Again, as far as now, uh, you know, representing the United Community Bank uh, as hopefully the lender of this, uh, you know, we look forward to doing business with uh, with the development with the Airport Authority and, and, and the Development Authority in, in Pickens County. Uh, so, uh, so anyway, that all being said, uh, get this project done, get get the revenues coming in, and quite frankly, uh, I'd like to see uh, some others. And, uh, uh, Get this thing, uh, get this thing now. It's starting to be a, a viable entity of the county. It's a very expensive asset that we've got. That, of course, we've been through some economic times. I'll have to mention to you guys, but uh, we've had some stressful times the last seven or eight years and so on. So hopefully, those are behind us, and and uh, we can uh, we can turn this big ship and and, uh, and make this asset a very viable asset for the county. Mr. Edwards. What's the term? You're looking at different interest rates. What's the term on the We're talking basis of a 20 year. Mm -hmm. So it, well, how, how often could the interest rate change? Well, these are some details we're going to need to work out with this. Uh, one thing about this, David, is on the surface, this particular loan is, is, should qualify for the bank to be able to loan its money with a with a, a, a tax break on, on the on the spread that we well, have. It's very it's very secure. I understand. If it goes forward. But, right. But <laughs> but but see the thing about it is 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 when you when you can make loans to municipalities like that, you know, that the, a bank it's a community reinvestment mm -hmm. uh, phase of the banking world. Right. So you're able to get a little better rate, you do a little things that the bank gets credit for, so we pass that on. So that's why I asked David to do a, a test of this, because on the surface it all should fit. And once the attorneys get involved and we start looking at this and so on, there could be something there that would disqualify that from that standpoint. So that's why I asked him to go in there and raise that, raise that rate. That's to do that. Okay. Jerry, would you, would you structure it as a bond or just a straight loan? I think right now we're probably going to look at it as a straight loan and, and not do it as a, uh, as a bond right there. But uh, again, uh, Monticello and you know, we went with him, uh, they'll fall under his jurisdiction. Monticello's our legal counsel, by the way, for this time. It won't be a mortgage. It won't, it won't be a mortgage. No, you, got, you can't mortgage. Yeah. But it, is, is it 
fair to consider this as a level payment from day one? Would the bank consider interest only for some period of time, like five years? Uh, uh, why would we do interest only? Hmm? Why would we do interest only? Just to let the project get started and solidify and, and uh, save us a little money, a little cash flow. Okay. Understand. Um, the five years, to be honest with you, would be a stretch. Um, if that's what you want to look at, we need to discuss that with the Bureau of Development Authority. Quite frankly, with what you've laid out here in the um, in, in the um, um, the amount of, um, of availability or the, or the less amount of availability of these hangers, you know, I think you're going to more or less want to have them, the last screw put in, or even when we stand there ready to move in. Um, quite frankly, I think it's going to be a new point, but, but if that's something you feel strongly about, I'm just you know, I'm just throwing it out. I understand. Yeah, but the shorter term uh, interest only might be of value. I would go through that building process and yeah, you know that 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 instrument like that again. There's some details we just start working out because we've got to get to the point of hey, look, we want to do yeah. this. Everybody's on board. Just get it signed off, and then we'll have to work out that structure. Um, very possible we could uh, bit, uh, make a hypothetical statement here. We do six months interest only, whatever it was. The project being being built, and at the end of that point period of time, then the amortization period starts, or nine months, or something like that. Maybe. All right. Well, anything a year or less is good enough. Start talking five years, you kind of go start looking back. Well, you know, uh, don't want to do that. So, like I said, uh, just for discussion. I understand. understand. I know my folks have looked at this. This particular project that I've shared with them is, is David, and you guys have shared with, with me and so on. And you know, we're excited about it. We want we want to be part of it. So you know, we want to uh, you know. Uh, and, 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 you know, Pickens County as a whole, uh, we're fortunate to do a lot of business in Pickens County and we'll do more business in Pickens County. Uh, so, uh, you know, when you've got that kind of uh, backing and so on, then unless something just really gets off the ditch, you know, if somebody does something that's, you know, that's just not typical, then we will want to be, we want to be part Great. Well, we want to be part of it too. Yeah. For sure. Uh, I guess the next specific step we have that I ought to take here is <clears throat> perhaps talk to Phil Landrum as well as uh, uh, the commissioner and make sure that we got clarity on the, the intergovernmental agreement. Uh, Phil, I guess, could give us some insight into that, uh, but I'll, I will, I'll clarify that right up front. That's got to be the next step. Right? Okay, any other questions? Everybody okay with us proceeding uh, in, the, in this direction? Yes. Okay. Uh, on the subject of Phil Landrum, uh, briefly, I have forwarded him your agreement. I know we need to get that going. It's been since October. I think you sent the original draft. Uh, we'll try to get that resolved here properly. That is the pond, the, the agreement between the county and pond, the engineering contract. Okay, uh, any other discussion on this subject? All right, uh, one item of new business. Uh, uh, Randy has asked, uh, Ed has asked, uh, mm -hmm. I haven't driven the car over there, but <laughs> everybody's asking for a new car. Uh, I did talk to, to uh, Commissioner Jones about this during our discussions, and he tells me that there's a good chance that we may end up with a vehicle which was um, taken in uh, one of the drug raids there where assets were Acquired, confiscated, yeah. Confiscated, yeah. <laughs> so, it, was it, would a Maserati be okay? <laughs> Are we going to have to do a sniff test? No, Ricky Jackson. <laughs> Ricky Jackson couldn't fix it. Of course. <laughs> yeah, but, it, uh, you know, the man is never going to Remind me to tell you the story about that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, it, 
and another thing that I've been involved in, I'm a recipient of one of those. I'll tell you the story. <laughs> well, we're trying to keep this under an hour, and we've got five minutes. Do you want to? We, we, the, the, uh, of course, I'm involved with the West End Fire Department in uh, the county and have been for many years. So several years ago, we needed a, um, a we wanted a four-wheel drive vehicle to use them and so on. I also got to asking around and more of them got just what you need. We took it in on, on a C's deal, you know, whatever. So it's a Jeep, Jeep Cherokee. Uh, unfortunately, it wasn't four-wheel drive, but we got it and all and it looked pretty nice and so on. But we started having a few issues with it, so I carried it to uh, a mechanic friend of mine here in the county and whatever, and David called me and he said, uh, <clears throat> Where'd you get this Jeep at? And I said, well, I um, told him the deal. And he started laughing. He said, do you realize this thing is about five Jeeps put together? <laughs> said, really? He said, he said uh, yeah. He said, uh, uh, he said, you remember the old Johnny Cash song about the guy that stole the Cadillac, you know, one part at a time? I said, yeah, I do. He said, well, that's what they did with this one. <laughs> yeah. no. He said, he said, he said, I'm amazed at how good a job. Well, I did a little research and come to find out the video came from uh, from a guy that was running a chop shop here in the county. So, so it was. It, it, you you know, know you can't trust car people. You can't. <laughs> so, so it was. Uh, it was it was uh, it was interesting. Every time we needed to buy parts for it, we didn't know really where to ask. It was a '97 or a 2001 or what? Was there an R and R sticker on that? Hey, hey! <laughs> <laughs> hey since the discussion, but, 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 but there was there was an ice cream production company, so since the discussion is over, uh, you're talking about appearance standards for the uh, respective yeah. co-manager. How is that going to affect Randy? Are we going to allow him to be grandfathered in? <laughs> <laughs> I am a grandfather. I am a grandfather. I've got number six uh, next month and number seven. Congratulations, man. Congratulations. 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 I forgot you. Five about girls. <laughs> I apologize, it, but hopefully you'll have a little better experience. Because we've all laughed at it. We still uh, have the Jeep. You still have it? We still, still have it. Oh, oh, my God. I thought it was the ground underneath the feet. It was a good crowd. Yeah. 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 Exactly, exactly. Yeah. 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 I like everything well hit. I wonder why the dash didn't quite look right in there. You know, comb my eyebrows. It didn't look quite right. Right four years before, you know. <laughs> My save date is more than mine. All right. Uh, is there any other business before the authority tonight? If not, uh, we're adjourned. 7.59. Perfect. Uh, our next meeting will be February 9th, uh, Tuesday. And before Nine. everybody stands, Doc, Doc, would you go around the table? Before? We're going to miss you a lot. I want right. you to know. And I, I hope that you'll... I hope that you'll agree to come back to a meeting every once in a while. I will come uh, when you see. need me to come. Uh, in, in, Dallas, in Dallas, with your wisdom and correct us when we make mistakes, and uh, uh, maybe you'll come back. I want to say, after a little, after let me a little say sabbatical. one thing, looking at what you guys have done with this, this would never have happened with a doctor and a pharmacist as your number one and number two people <laughs> on this board. So you guys have done a great job because I got no business sense and that's well, really great. This is not about us, it's about you. And I want, I want to read this, Kenneth Austin, MD, Doc. David. In grateful appreciation for service as founding member and chairman, Pickens County Airport Authority, 2006 to 2016. Now that's 10 years, not nine years. Well, the actually the authority was sworn in in February of 2007. Well, we'll but we you. we did our training in 2006. We'll give you an extra year. <laughs> <Right>. Thank you. <laughs>